All right, we're back. We never left. Time to get some of those uh, keywords in. We're back with another RimWorld. 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 This game is RimWorld. Playthrough of biotech. We're doing a gene high genetic dwarf RimWorld biotech run. It's a RimWorld biotech run on the hardest difficulty. Hardest difficulty. Losing is fun. RimWorld biotech. Let's play. No, I'll stop. <laughs> Let's play RimWorld biotech. 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 It's like Beetlejuice. All right, infestation uh, actually handled very easily with these friggin' genes. Holy crap, that was uh, pretty smooth, actually. Pretty smooth. It went surprisingly easy. Our modest fellowship I mean, melee block with shotguns against yourself. insects is one of the easiest ways to take care of them. Uh, even in the late game, even with like tons of insects. What size do you make them? It depends. On this playthrough, we're tunneler, so space doesn't matter. So I'm going to make them about this size. We'll be able to get them to decent, which is good enough for me to start with. And we might go from there. I'm your best friend. <laughs> Thank you. Have robust on them? I do, yeah. Robust. And our starting ones are also tough. So tough, robust is actually godly melee blockers. Holy crap. I didn't even realize just how strong it would be. But boy, is it. How many years do you think I'll make it? Uh, I plan to live probably into my 90s, yeah. I'm hoping, you know, I, I live pretty healthily in general. I, I do sit a lot, though, so I gotta get... No, uh, I have no idea. As long as we can go. As long as we can go. <laughs> Always a positive thing. That's right. I try, I try. So anyway, to prevent infestation, either don't build under or near overhead mountain, reduce overhead mountain tile temperature to negative 17 Celsius or lower, or just literally disable them if you don't want to deal with them. Whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and get some of these hauled out. I'm just going to do it like this. So we're just going to drop it in here. I know it's not out, out, but it counts as being ugly because this is a room. So we're just going to get it out of the barracks area. There we go. There we go. We will build another little passive cooler here and a couple new kegs. There we go. Perfect. For now, we'll just use the stockpile in here. We're almost fully moved in. Bedrooms are a lot more viable since they don't increase wealth difficulty by much. Yeah, it's in bedrooms have their bonuses. I mean, I think barracks overall are stronger, but it's not just because of the wealth and stuff. It's literally the footprint because also, uh, and I think most people that play this game starting out, and I was the same way, I think most people, especially if you don't have a DLC, end up getting a colonist of like, eight to 12 colonists, like eight to 12 for the full game. I hardly ever go like very much beyond that, right? Eight to 12 bedrooms. Yeah, it's a lot of space, but it's not that much space compared to like my playthroughs where I usually get 30, 35 colonists, sometimes 40 or 50 colonists. Like having that many bedrooms takes up so much room. It's not even the wealth sucks as well, but the, the big part of it is just how much space it takes up and therefore it increases travel time, increases work distance. It does a lot of a lot of crap. So but anyway, bedrooms do have their uh, their positives, of course. But they also have their negative. Why dig so deep into the mountain? Because this entire area is going to become a series of different types of defensive structures, basically. How do you handle Freezer of the Mountain if I use them? So when I do Freezer of the Mountain, I usually have uh, either one of two things. Either I will use Thin Rock Roof as a chimney, or I'll have them go towards like the tunnel opening so that we can exhaust it out, the heat out that way. And I'll do that with um, reactors as well. Like even here, like this is deep ocean water, so enemies cannot walk through here. So I can just open this and vent all of our heat out that way. You like the smaller runs? Yeah, the thing about RimWorld, man, there was this thing that I got linked to recently where people were just going off on people for playing how they want. My big thing with RimWorld always is just do whatever's fun for you. If you see me playing a certain way, it's literally because I think it's going to be fun for me. I play this game so friggin' much because it's my, my job. I mean, I like it too, but I'm going to be playing thousands more hours of this. So everything I do, it's because I think it's going to be fun at that time for me. I don't think everyone should play that way or whatever. Man, oh man, I got linked to this thread or people were like angry that people play differently than them. It's like, you know, chill out, play however you want. I don't care. Turn everything off, turn on peaceful, make a awesome, very aesthetic, beautiful little village, you know, a generational village with no raids ever. Or do this or anything in between, I don't, I don't care. Just as long as you're having fun. So we're gonna do just a very basic shotgun tunnel to start here and go from there. Doors don't use shotguns. They absolutely do. Are you someone that thinks that the only dwarves that exist in fantasy are from Tolkien? <laughs> These are Warhammer dwarves. 
we are going to use explosives and guns. We are Warhammer dwarves, and maybe we'll eventually get to 40k dwarves. Yeah. That's a grudge. And, yeah, we were talking about that in the beginning. So, uh, going in my ideology, those of you from Warhammer, you see that the two ancestor gods I have are Grogni and Valea. And I didn't put the third one because it just rolled as two, so I named them. And we were talking about at the beginning of the stream. It's like, Grimnir is not going to be happy. I understand why you did it, but you're going in the book. All right, let's get that beer flowing. Does the large map sizes cause any performance or pathing issues? It does uh, hit performance pretty hard. As far as pathing goes, it's not exactly pathing. It's that if someone is, is set for a job that is not interruptible and they're going far away on the map, they will ignore their needs to go there. So it can cause problems in that way as far as just pathing goes. Or, but I use zone zoning rules, so it doesn't really matter for me. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and work on getting a small shotgun tunnel. I'd love to get a second or third shotgun at some point. We'll just set Your one here. Loyalty is we can edit it uh, heavily later. So we'll have just a little area like this. Maybe a little bit further over. A little bit further over. All right, what run number is this? First of the dwarves, second of biotech. Let's get some double beds going here. We gotta get some baby dwarves. Okay, uh, so we're gonna have them come around. We need one, two, two spaces, then we're gonna cut over. It's a very, very basic shotgun tunnel to start with. Very basic. Dwarf babies have beards? I don't know, I don't know, we'll find out. Why do I have so many mushrooms? It's going to be one of the things that we we trade, but I'm used to having more colonists at this stage. Also, we're going to eat a lot more on this one. We have genes that are going to make us eat a lot more, so almost everyone's like a gourmand. But also, we're going to use the excess right now to just go out and trade. Abasia. We got an Abasia pawn. A high mates. How would that work if we have a high mate dwarf baby? Hmm. It's like a shiny Pokemon. <laughs> Uh, let's find out. Let's find out. All right. Uh, Soul Sapper, go ahead and go rescue them. High mates are pretty rare. Yeah, they're mainly from slavers. So having one just fall out of the sky is kind of interesting. She's Yeah, they're 42 anyway, so fertility is going to be not be great. But anyway, we'll leave them there for now. It has to be a couple first. You can click on the heart and then set it to whatever you desire. Yeah, I was hoping that um, ideology free and approved a physical loving precept would make it easier but apparently it hasn't they really don't like overlapping and having the dlc stuff interact and you, know, you can really see it there okay we're gonna go ahead and rip that up oh hey hey hey, hey. wait 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 <laughs> hang on <laughs> okay. and it will eventually use kim fuel the mushrooms too so Smoothing floors. I haven't smoothed any floors yet, but I do smooth floors and mountain bases every time. Every time. All right. Um, we really need that electricity research. It's going to take quite a while, so we'll probably just kind of chill a little bit. We have this set up. I need to get some columns there. Um, well, let's go ahead and put down a stone cutter table. I guess I'll just throw it in here for now. Yeah, I really wish they made the DLCs interact more. I, I don't know. So one of the most annoying parts about that I found so far about them not interacting is natural meditation. So now if you start as tribal and you're doing biotech, you have your five tribals that have natural meditation, but none of their children or any of that will ever none, no children. So you can have two tribal people that both have natural backgrounds and therefore can produce anima grass. If they have children, their children will never be able to use anima grass kind of sucks. I doubt they're going to fix it. I really hope they do. I hope I'm wrong about it. But judging on how they usually treat stuff like that, they probably won't. So. Mad rats. Mad rat. Don't think we have to worry about the mad rats. All right. So we got a melee block set up. A very basic one. We want to go ahead and put a door over here. And a door here. But that should be good for just a basic setup. Sandra will be attacking us again here pretty soon. Looks like it's been about six days. Good enough. We'll let them uh, get the research done. All right. So keep an eye on this. And uh, I guess we can go ahead and start thinking about how we're going to do the exhaust over here. I might just want to see 
if this opens or how it's set up in here. So let's just go ahead and make a door through here. And we'll just do this. And we'll go from there. See how that is. Also, let's go ahead and change the zones. So we're going to go ahead and clear the inside from down here. I don't want to accidentally put them down there. Expand inside to be inside the actual mountain here. Uh, and then clear walls. Back. There we go. That should be fine for now. And for the work zone, uh, yeah, we don't want to go that far out anymore. Pretty long distance for our little dwarven legs. We are we are slow. I I already got an infestation. When can you expect them? You can get them in almost immediately. Yeah, it actually doesn't take a lot of raid points or wealth to cause an infestation. So they become active very, very quickly. But starting out, they're usually either only one or two hives. So they're not too bad. But you can get them almost right away. Yep. What do you think is the most difficult biome other than ice and extreme desert? Cold bog? <laughs> cold bog, probably. Honestly, I'd rather do desert than a cold bog. <laughs> it's it's pretty gross. So cold bog is basically like a swamp map, but it's cold. So you don't get the benefit of like year-long growing. But you get the god awfulness of trying to build in a friggin' bog. I think I'm going to accept this. So they changed it. You used to be able to get to tell if they would betray or not, even from this screen. But they, they fixed that in 1.3-ish or something. I think I'm going to take this. We have the extra food. They're not going to like mushrooms, but we can use this to get our research done. So uh, let's go ahead and accept them. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to have them drop their weapons here. So another good thing to have extra food for when you have low population in case you get hit with these. Okay, research, research, research. That one can't research. Okay, so that one will help with cooking the whole time they're here. All right, we're going to need more research benches. Looks like that opens all the way, huh? Look at that. Nice little chimney down there. First manhunter, three rhinos, three rhinos. Optimal range for assault rifle. I like 28 tiles in length for assault rifle kill tunnels. That's my preferred. You can go a little bit longer if you want, but that's what I like. Man, the friggin' rot stink on Scaria. Stupid Scaria. Why columns? Columns will make it so enemies don't shoot from those tiles unless they get stunned on the tiles. Same thing with barricades and stuff, but they each have their own plus and minus, so. Plant whatever you want, or only fungal. You can plant whatever you want in fungal gravel, yeah. But yeah, you can plant whatever you want. I used to use a sun lamp in fungal gravel to grow fiber corn for wood in my playthrough where I was darkness under the mountain, so. But yeah, I used to use columns a whole lot, so columns are actually overall generally better for this as long as you aren't ripping them apart with your own people. So as you get higher attack power and whatnot, you want to replace it with higher HP stuff. Like even plasteel columns aren't enough. And so you'll end up using plasteel barricades for the interest of the kill box. This early game makes sense to use it. All right, we are going to cook more meals while these people are here. Why you didn't just close the door to keep the rhinos out? I wanted to get some shooting experience and melee experience. And uh, I was hoping that we'd get some meat from any that didn't have or didn't insta-rot from Scaria. When the manhunter attacks get bigger, I'll do that. But right now I wanted, uh, I wanted what they were offering. Melee combat with a rhino would be a harrowing experience, yeah, to say the least. All right, we're actually going to get some research done thanks to these visitors. All right, get some of that wood back. Victoria 3. Yeah, I've never played those. I I did play a little bit of um, uh, EU4. But, uh, Crusader Kings, of course. All right, electricity. So we want to get to biofuel refining. All right, so we got benches for everyone. Benches for everyone. Major break on one of the visitors. What's your problem? 
Night Owl in the daytime. Slept in the cold, slept on the ground, but decent barracks. All right, we'll get that up. Yeah, I try to answer everything I see, and sometimes, you know, something will get asked a whole lot over and over, and I don't get annoyed by it, but sometimes it does take take away from things a little bit. So I try to get, like, clips and things of it, or I'll tell you to go, go back and watch, but I try my best, because I know people are always trickling in and out, you know? I always do this to the floor in mountain bases, literally every one of them. We're trying to get to uh, 120 impressiveness. Actually, we're trying to get to 80 first. Well, I do artistic floor again. I Yes, I have some plans for that. One of the most funs I've had in, on the stream recently is when I did the racetrack and I and I left it uneven on purpose and then pretended, completely pretended that stream that I didn't know what people were talking about. Oh, it's so good. People are like, man, you got crazy poker face. All right, what else do we want to knock out while they're here? So we can do the IVF. I really think we should take advantage and get some things that we really, really need. So this one can't do research. So let's have him work on hauling some of this junk then. Yeah, we can do that. So let's haul this stuff out of this tunnel. And for our other people, we'll just turn off hauling right now. Just while he's here. This person has abasia, so they have a, a paralytic disease. They're going to be immobile for up to 40 days. But yeah, they have paralytic abasia. It's uh, something they added with royalty. So if you don't have royalty or you don't have royalty enabled, you won't see paralytic abasia. Uh, they can actually get healed sooner. They are a high mate, so what our goal here with them is, is to convert them over to our faction and use them to breed baby dwarves. Knocking out a bunch of research. Very nice. Uh, you didn't realize you could adjust work priorities in bulk with 800 plus hours. Okay, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, you can hold shift and left click to change an entire group up by one and right click to put it down by one. So you hold shift and you right click here or you left click and it actually tells you if you hover over it. All right, what are we at here? Somewhat impressive, okay. So another thing I, I wanna do here is I wanna have all of them equip a piece of wood. You might be saying, ah, why do you want all your visitors to have a piece of wood? Well, I'm glad you asked me. Uh, if they rebel against us, if they rebel, I don't want them to pick up better weapons. So if they try to beat us up with a piece of wood, more power to them. All my guests have wood. Yeah, I really hoped we'd have another mule by now, but we don't. So right now, yeah, we're just pumping out research while they're here. We might as well. Look at all those research benches going. Love to see it. Tribal research. Look how fast that bar is going. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Me want more smart. Me want more strong. <laughs> Me want live past 35. Cold snap. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. We should be okay in here. But uh, maybe we'll go ahead and just build this just in case. We are under the mountain, so it should sit about 60-ish. Uh, maybe a little bit colder with the door open and stuff, so. Also, we got Thrumbo. So, the cold snap lets me know, yeah, winter is here. Winter is here. We're not going to be me meleeing any Thrumbo right now, just to be clear. Individual rooms I have planned? <gasps> yes, 94 beers. 94 bottles of beer in the mountain. 94 bottles of beer. Be careful passing that stuff around. We need it to live. Can child refugees betray you? I, I'm guessing they can. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it sucks the hops is gone. They can't end the children, uh, like the three-year-olds betray you. <laughs> you didn't cut the crust off my sandwich. Betrayal. <laughs> Man, this research is going fast with all these benches. All right, next. Uh, what do we want them to knock out for us? Um, screw it. Let's get to shotguns. A quiet lynx. Crowbar, prime counselor of Gabaron is looking for a safe settlement to take care of her pet lynx damage for 17 days. Uh, we don't really care about any of that right now, so no. Yeah, it's amazing how fast research goes with like nine people doing it, you know? Uh, I, it's one of the most common questions I get is like, why do you have so many research benches? I even get it on YouTube quite a bit, and this is why. Like, this is tribal speed research. Will pawn seek out recreation if they need it? So yeah, you can look at my scheduling guide if you want, but basically, if they're in an anything or a recreation block and they need a recreation and they're zoned to be able to go there, they'll do it if, if they have the recreation. So anything or recreation and they'll do it. Uh, more details and specifics about that is in the scheduling guide. So for anyone that doesn't know, it goes left to right and left to right one, left to right two, left to right three, left to right four, right? That's the priority. 
I usually look at things that are essential for survival first and, and make sure I schedule those. And then also uh, the next thing is essential for mood, right? So you'll notice cleaning is pretty high on everyone because that's going to be a big mood hit if this barracks goes down, you know? But at, at a very basic level, that's what I do. Hey, no beer. Leave our beer alone. Oh no, oh no, he's dead. There's no one down there, he's a guest. There's no way, he doesn't have this. Yeah, he's dead. What? He's a Neanderthal, right? I can't believe that he won that. 100% thought he was dead. Wow. Way to go, guy. Way to go. He's not even a dwarf. Neanderthal. Me smash would stick. <laughs> stick all me need. Me beat danger puppy. Way to go. Way to go. Look at you. Honorary dwarf. Dwarf in spirit, for sure. Not a dwarf, but what about a friend? <laughs> Hopefully. Man, he wrecked that thing. I can't believe he killed that. I really thought he was 100% dead, but don't underestimate the Neanderthal. Blight on the hops. All right, this cut all blight button is new. Uh, there's a, a way to set this up where you don't have to do all the right clicking. All right, I'll do it. I'll, I won't be... All right, anyway, expand allowed area, manage. I'm gonna add a new area, area one. I'm gonna expand area one over the blinded area. I'm gonna go into schedule. I'm gonna grab sloth and put them in area one. I'm gonna put them on all work. There we go. Now, I'm gonna clear that. They're gonna come down here and they're they're just gonna go right through all that. Look at that. You can also set it if you want. You can set them to only plant cutting and not, you know, sowing. And they won't replant while they're doing it, but anyway. Nice little trick. Put them back in area one. Give them the normal schedule again. And we'll just delete that area. You don't need a mod for auto cut blight anymore. It's it's just in the base game now. There's literally a cut all now. Okay. They still have to be able to go to the zone, but and and there's there are things like Octung and stuff like that where you can just right click as well. But now you can set all to cut all blight with just a button. Concrete and art for beauty is wealth efficient. Yeah, it's pretty wealth efficient, yeah. Straw floor instead of concrete stacks up. I don't like straw floor. It's 150% flam flammable. So flammability, if anything happens and your and your straw floor catches on fire, it goes up so fast and superheats the room that it's it's really crazy. I don't like it, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, personal preference, I suppose. So no, I haven't done the, the flat out math on it versus concrete as far as wealth efficiency, but yeah, it goes up really, really fast, which is uh, which is, can be scary. So right now we're just kind of sitting back waiting for Cassandra to attack again and uh, weathering this winter and getting our research done. Oh my god, we're already to chain shotguns with these people here. Okay. Green, go ahead and go trade with them. Put a stockpile zone over these and then I'm just going to put it on allow nothing. Doors are pretty OP. <laughs> Actually stronger than I thought it was going to end up being, but we'll see how it goes. All right, um, yeah, I don't want to. Quest, insects, seven hives. I don't want to deal with seven hives. That's a three-star quest, so. Our normal hive infestation right now is like two, two or three hives. I don't want to deal with seven. Oh, one of the people that are visiting is addicted to Psyche. Okay, we got about five more days here. Something like that. We'll get as much research out of these guys as we can while they're here, and then we'll go back to what we were doing. So I am going to divide these rooms, mainly in case bugs spawn. Uh, it's not a mod, it's in the base game. So to show weapons now, you go to options, you go to interface, and weapons below portrait. Always, while drafted, or never. That's a 1.4 edition. You no longer need a mod for it. How often do they bring, drink beer? I have them set only once per every four days right now. I could span it out to 1.5. Eventually, I'm going to have one a day. Beer day keeps the doctor away. That's right. Beer's not even cold. It must be torture. <laughs> New livers? Nah, we'll be fine. Our genes take care of that. 10 per day. <laughs> all right, all right. Here's here's some of the... Let's do a few of the top five things I'm asked when a new player comes in and sees this, right? So one, 
You see the pawns up here? You can right click, hold down right click, and you can drag your pawns wherever you want. No mod needed. People ask that all the time. All right, there's one. There's one of the ones I'm asked. All right, on to number two. Top five emerald tips. Uh, number two. People come in all the time. They say, Adam, how do you have the items in, in the category in the top left? What mod is that? Well, kind viewer, it's not. In the bottom right of your screen, there's something called categorize mode. It's been in there since alpha. You can literally just click it and it goes into full list or it goes into the categorized mode. So there's another one. All right. Number three. Well, I can't play without allow everything. Well, you see these icons? You can actually right click on a lot of these icons to get an another function just in the base game. You can click on allow and you can do unforbid all items. You can do allow all. You can right click on forbid and forbid all. You can right click on plans. You get the idea. Right click on a bunch of these things. A lot of things in here have right click functionality that uh, the game doesn't really tell you about. All right. Number four. You can pretty much drag orders on just about everything. So instead of going through here and being like, all right, industrial medicine, industrial medicine, industrial medicine. If you select it and then you hold down left click, you can drag it and it just does it to everyone. This works with zones. It works with lots of things. It works with almost everything in the game. Number five. Number five, you can rotate through pawns really quickly by hitting comma and period. Look at that. You can leave this open. You can go through there really quick. Comma and period. All right, I'll give you a bonus. Uh, number six that I'm asked about all the time. Uh, you can change all this by holding shift and left click, right click. So if you want to change everyone to bed rest, left click, right click. All right, nice. Number seven, medical defaults. This is also not a mod. You can change medical defaults for people coming. If you're like, man, I don't understand why when hostile factions come up, I'm giving them my, my glitter well medicine. Why is it set by default? It's because you haven't changed it. It's because you haven't changed it. You click, you click on your pawn, you go to health, you click default, and you can change what they show up with individually. There's another one. Number eight, quest rewards. You want better quest rewards? You, you're tired of, you're tired of the empire being like, we'll give you eight reputation. Well, friggin' no. You come in here, you click on reward preference, and you turn this off so they give you the good stuff instead of reputation. Anyway, there's lots of crap like that, so don't feel bad when you miss out on that stuff. That's eight out of five. It's... You can you can change their default meals in prisoners. You can change their default meals as well. Like the food restrictions, prisoners have the same button. People ask me all the time too. It's like, how do I make my prisoners only eat the meals I want? Well, you click on the prisoner, and you just choose what meal you want them to <laughs> to eat. There's all kinds of stuff like that. All kinds of stuff like that. So don't feel bad. I learned this stuff over four thousand hours of streaming it. There's so many. I still learn new stuff all the time. Should make a video of those. <laughs> Probably should. Eight out of five tips. Here's a top five list with eight things on it. Yeah. <laughs> I missed all that. Can you do it again? No. All right. We got the fertility knocked out there. So what else? What else do we want to grab while they're here? While they're here, we'll grab... Uh, You know what? Screw it. Let's get fire. Generous or let's get micro electronics. Screw it. We gotta wait until she wakes up from a beja before we can... I shouldn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say it. I was just, someone in chat said that. I was just reading it. Uh, our first mech. Oh, no. We don't have uh, EMPs. All Scythers. Screw it, guys. Oh, I don't want my, no, let's, oh, Christ. I kind of want to see how strong we are against Scythers. Because we are very strong. But I also have these guys. <laughs> oh, right. Mechs prepare now. It's going to take a long time to get used to mechs preparing. Over 4,000 hours of mechs not preparing, and now they prepare. It's, it's it's weird. What are they doing while they're preparing? The Scythers are psyching themselves up. These guys are just made of flesh. Aim for the toes, aim for the fingers. Those are very easy to destroy. They're made out of butter. Secondary targets, arms, legs.